the focus of today is where is BMW and Mercedes when it comes to their forward planning as we enter kind of an electric world. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. We want to thank you for joining us. If you're your first time, welcome. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. We also want to note that we are uh, <clears throat> grateful for our Patreon supporters. Your support uh, enables our channel to exist and function and is greatly appreciated. We also want to thank those of you who choose to like and subscribe. So the focus of today's conversation is kind of a combination of Bob Lutz, uh, Daimler Benz, and even BMW to some extent in terms of what their current EV plans might be, particularly as it relates to Tesla. So <clears throat> we did a show focused on Bob Lutz and kind of an update of how his theories are going when it comes to EVs. Um, after doing that show, there's a question that popped up, which was, well, yes, we know what the folks at GM and Bob Lutz are up to now that they're building a plant with LG. But the new question was, well, how are the other OEMs handling the fact that they weren't really, have not shown themselves ready yet in the battery solution space. And so particularly what's fascinating about this is that some of the theories that Bob Lutz presented over the last few years are still the overall operating plans that these large OEMs are working on. So I'll remind you, if you will, that one of the predictions Bob Lutz had was that the, uh, the large factories that are building batteries that Tesla was investing in would end up becoming an anvil around the neck of the company because what was anticipated by Lutz slash GM was over time uh, other sort of battery manufacturers would build factories and those new factories would enable uh, the, uh, the folks at GM and others to sort of install the same OEM system, which is 25% vertically integrated, that's been in the auto business for the last 50 to 60 years. So this kind of answers an interesting question. The former CEO of Daimler actually made the comment. He said, look, one of the problems that's uh, coming for Tesla is the fact that the direction they've chosen relative to current batteries may not represent the batteries of the future, which will be viable, and it leaves these the current battery facilities that Tesla has, it, it kind of puts the company in jeopardy. Well, this argument by the folks at GM, a little, or at, uh, at uh, Daimler, actually somewhat fits a discussion by Bob Lutz and GM in which they were arguing that uh, the battery technology would sort of move forward and Tesla would be left behind with old factories that were no longer viable. Well, something very interesting has been happening over the last six to eight months, which is Tesla is now working to deliver at scale the 4680 batteries. So they are not only building them next to the current factory, uh, they also have, Panasonic has at least one line dedicated to the 4680 that's been added to the factory in Reno. And then the other thing that's going on is both uh, the factory in Germany and the factory in Austin are known to be building uh, lines that will handle the 4680. So this is a very interesting situation because there's sort of a question mark over Daimler. They unsuccessfully tried to build batteries uh, three or four years ago, but there hasn't seemed to have been any dramatic move on their part to sort of define how the future was gonna look in the form of uh, joint ventures to build factories or something of that ilk. So they have been investing in companies that have technologies 
but we really haven't seen them on a scale battery build process over recent years. And it seems as though the hope that everybody has is that the folks who are building battery factories um, and then selling their production to the large OEMs is the direction that the industry is relying on to be Tesla competitive. I would say this is kind of a good idea because it keeps the cost of that new battery plant off of your balance sheet. But the one big problem that I'm seeing there is if in fact there's a five to 10% markup of those batteries and then Tesla's producing its own batteries, you're giving away uh, a cost competitive advantage to Tesla in the process. There are other negatives like, can you successfully define, you know, who's the priority if the factory is sharing different OEMs, who's the priority in terms of getting uh, the first run of production coming out of that plant, or if there's an increase in demand, or if there's a decrease in demand, how is that gonna be handled? The other question mark that's going on right now is that Tesla is at least eight to 10 years into uh, battery research and development for next stages. And this multiple year competitive research advantage has been sort of articulated by how the 4680 is being presented. But the other question mark is, where are the new iterations of batteries that uh, competing firms are gonna leverage in order to be Tesla competitive going forward? So the sense then that I have is that it seems as though the answer that many of the OEMs like Daimler have is hope that Tesla stumbles, A, and B, hope that the new manufacturers that are building uh, large amounts of batteries will be able to deliver battery models that'll be Tesla competitive in a few years. Now, it's obvious that the potential here is that if in fact Tesla delivers the 4680 successfully and is able to deliver a $25,000 vehicle off of that new technology, it could take multiple years for competitors to catch up. And in theory, they could end up um, non-competitive for too long to the point where once they do finally pull it together, they may, may be out of business. So one of the conversations that we're having a lot with our viewers is the fact that, well, it's nice that you keep having this discussion but Bob, uh, <clears throat> about Bob Lutz, but what's interesting is that the core logic of what he introduced seems right now to still be um, the core plans that seem to be in place for a lot of large OEMs. Um, the question is, why is that? Uh, there's some legitimate arguments there for not going down the road Tesla's on. Daimler CEO or former CEO articulated that, what if the technology changes dramatically and you're committed heavily in one direction? valid argument. The other issue that comes up is right now the the major ICE companies are in an R&D difficult position. They still have to keep developing ICE vehicles that make them competitive in the current market, but they also have to free up capital to invest in the future when it comes to EVs at the same time. And that's a lot of capital that, that they have to deploy um, in two different directions at the same time. So that's a further incentive to keep going down the current path, particularly because it's your biggest draw of revenue, even if that is expected to change dramatically as we go forward. So I would say that we're in a very interesting period right now. Which battery technology will emerge in theory Toyota is saying that's going to be um, graphene-driven uh, entities. But that's the question mark right now, is over time, what will emerge as the dominant uh, 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 battery technologies that everyone can commit to and therefore 
enjoy a great deal of success as that's implemented. <clears throat> the overall answer to this whole thing is um, right now it seems like there's a lot of prayer going on that Tesla might fail, but that has not shown itself to be the norm. So uh, what do I think is going to happen? I believe there's going to be a huge scramble that takes place on the part of these large companies to get battery supplies as well as semi software, all these other solutions that help them to be able to deliver uh, sort of viable answers going forward. And without this uh, uh, sort of miracle, if you will, happening, I think you end up with a number of companies going out of business. So we asked one of our experts on uh, sort of battery and other technologies what his theory was on what might happen when it came to Tesla and the forward progress of batteries. And it's articulated by the fact that there are these new lines that are being opened up by Panasonic in the old factory. So it looks like the predicted issues that Daimler had said might occur are really not there as issues. And therefore, um, their reticence to put capital to work in large amounts to be competitive um, creates some very severe problems as we head towards the future. So I think this is a fascinating circumstance. We look forward to your comments on this, but it seems as though a number of makes are relying on the same playbook uh, to handle Tesla going forward. And the challenge is that they could end up so delayed in their response that they're unable to finally deliver solutions that make them competitive in the next uh, phase of vehicles as we enter EVs. We'll definitely keep you posted on this and I think it's a fascinating circumstance to keep an eye on. Just a reminder, we have a few SpaceX shares If you, uh, for those interested. We also want to note our health tips for today is just a reminder, do not eat within four hours of going to bed, ideally minimum two to let the food digest before you go to bed. We also have a number of other health tips that sit below and enjoy you, encourage you to take a peek at those as well. Um, for the end of our show today, we'll do our language exit, but we'll also take a look at the view here uh, in Maximo Park on the way out. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, tschüss German, au revoir, French, la hitro, Hebrew, hoda hafez, farsis, zaz, richer, Russian, ni ha ma, Chinese, kambawa, Japanese, hey do, Swedish, g'day, our friends in Australia. And in Jamaica, we say, enough respect, walk, good man. Have a great day, bye for now. And I hope you enjoy our upbound, water views.